Hello there, welcome in guys, Professor Zeeb here. And what we're going to do here is just sort of go over some uh, major concerns when it comes to prenatal development and pregnancy. Probably the most obvious one that we're going to mention here is nutrition. Probably goes without saying that nu the nutrition of mother is very important during pregnancy, especially if she is an adolescent as her body is still developing as well. But we are concerned uh, of women who do, are not getting proper nutrition or not eating appropriately uh, because we know it is linked to many problems, including health and behavioral problems. So really one of the main concerns here with nutrition and other issues as well is something called low birth weight, which obviously is a risk factor for developing children. We know that low birth weight is associated with many different things. Among them, of course, is low nutrition or lack of nutrition. But we also know it's linked to things like smoking while pregnant and substance abuse. The reason we're concerned with low birth weight is because it is linked to impaired brain development and can even be uh, a cause of death in the child, unfortunately. So this is something that can be very serious especially if the child is born under four pounds, which is a major red flag risk factor. So we know that a lot of things can lead to low birth weight, substance abuse, uh, specifically cocaine. Uh, we know smoking, as we mentioned, uh, even multiples uh, as the fetuses are competing for resources. Obviously, that could play, in, play a part as well. But the good news is, is that even though a child may be born uh, low birth weight, and by the way, our average our average weight of a child here in the United States is about seven and a half pounds. So the good news is, is that even if the child is born low birth weight, uh, they do have an amazing ability to bounce back. And we've gotten really uh, skillful at helping these children survive and overcome problems. But needless to say, it is an issue and we're concerned about it because it is linked to many different things. Next one we're going to talk about is something called fetal alcohol syndrome. It's pretty obvious that mothers should not be drinking while they're pregnant, and we've known this for decades. And so we know that, uh, unfortunately, kids who are exposed to alcohol in the womb, it does affect their brain and many areas. So just I want to show you some just basic uh, facial deformities that are often associated with FAS. So notice here we have the thin upper lip, that's very classic, and the widely spaced eyes. I mean, it's linked to many, many problems, not just facial deformities. So for example, it's linked to ear problems, heart problems, hyperactivity. In fact, some people argue that it is a source of, or a potential cause of ADHD. Some other problems, learning disabilities, being mentally challenged, uh, memory problems. So the point is it's, it's connected to so many problems in children and we want to get the message out there that absolutely is not safe to drink alcohol when you're pregnant. So I just want to go back to this previous slide. Uh, here's something I found online here where it compares the cerebral cortex of a six-week-old baby and a six-week-old baby who is FAS. Obviously a very severe uh, over-the-top example but this is kind of what we would expect the baby's brain to sort of look like over here, uh, being six weeks old. But then on the right here, you can see that an FAS child's brain, in this case a very severe case of that, the brain is really showing uh, damage and loss of tissue. So once again, another reason we're concerned with this particular problem because it is linked to brain damage, and we're going to examine exactly why. So with FAS, We've discovered in research that the more a mother drinks during pregnancy, the greater the risk. So, you know, I've had students tell me that their doctors said, you know, it's okay to drink a glass of wine with dinner uh, when they're pregnant. Obviously, that would be a low risk factor compared to, say, several cocktails. So the point is, is that we know that heavy drinkers uh, when pregnant is more likely to have a child who has this problem. But before we sort of jump to conclusions here, research has determined that there really is no safe level of alcohol. In fact, we do not know what is safe and what is not. In fact, a lot of recent studies have come out saying that absolutely no alcohol 
uh, should be consumed while pregnant because we simply do not know what is safe and what is not. So maybe you could get by with a glass of wine when you're pregnant, but to me, uh, is it worth the risk? I mean, that, that is putting your child's health in huge jeopardy and obviously not worth the risk in my opinion. So simply abstinence is the key there that you would absolutely want to avoid alcohol. We know that FAS is really linked to nervous system damage, particularly the brain, and we have discovered why. It has to do with something called GABA. <clears throat> if, so if you remember from Chapter 3, GABA is what we call an inhibitory neurotransmitter, which basically increases the chance that messages will be stopped. In other words, it's, it's telling the brain to basically shut down or to turn off or not stimulate the next neuron in the chain, if you recall from that previous chapter. So what we think is happening is when the fetus is exposed to alcohol in the womb, that GABA is being secreted in huge quantities. And so basically the neurons are not firing. They're not being stimulated enough, and therefore it leads to detrimental effects. So once again, we've discovered that it's linked to that particular neurotransmitter. The point is, if the neurons are not being used appropriately, then they can atrophy. And unfortunately, in this case, it could lead to devastating effects. Next, we go to conduct disorder. Conduct disorder is really kind of what it sounds like. These are uh, children who are often getting in trouble. Uh, for example, these are, are vandals or possibly kids that are aggressive or violating rules consistently. So this is a child that may be uh, in trouble with the law frequently or even at school kind of thing. And so we basically discovered, just to kind of continue the, the theme here, is that mothers who smoke during pregnancy increase their chances of having a child with conduct disorder. So there's been some research that have shown a connection, uh, you know, a correlation between smoking while pregnant and having chronic disorder in, in their child. I think we need to be careful with this particular finding is because remember this data is correlational. This, this is not a cause and effect type relationship because we could never do an experiment where mothers are smoking to see what would happen. <clears throat> they've simply related mothers who admit that they smoke during pregnancy and they've looked at the behavior of their children and found a connection. My question is, mothers who smoke while they're pregnant, what does that sort of say about them as a parent? In other words, I think it's pretty clear, I mean, it's been out there for decades that smoking is obviously dangerous for your child. So here we have someone who's continuing to do that. My next question is, what is the discipline like in the home? What else are they doing? Are they also doing drugs? You know, what is that home environment like, which could lead to behavioral and conduct problems. So when we see findings like this, you have to be extremely careful because it is correlational data. We, we're not saying that tobacco smoke is causing children to have conduct disorder, but merely associated. So I think there's other moving parts that we would need to consider. The last one we're going to talk about is something called SIDS. Sudden Infant Death Syndrome. Uh, this is every parent's nightmare. Uh, you may have heard of this one referred to as crib death, where a child typically between two and four months of age is lying in their crib, possibly taking a nap. The parents come in an hour later and the child is dead inside the crib. I mean, can you imagine how devastating this would be to you as a parent? So the reason we're bringing this one up is that we've also correlated this one to smoking. We know that women who have smoked while they were pregnant, it is correlated with having a SIDS child. In other words, it's, it's increasing the chance that your child may experience this. We, you know, there's a lot of theories going on with, with sudden infant death, death syndrome, including suffocation, or the child is lacking some kind of survival response if they cannot get appropriate oxygen, for example. In fact, doctors will tell you to not have your baby sleep on their stomach. Because if you think of it, a, a newborn cannot even roll over. So if they get in the situation where they cannot get enough air, uh, they may suffocate and create problems. Well, they have linked this one to those issues. 
but also smoking while pregnant. So the bottom line, guys, is that when you're pregnant, you should be avoiding those harmful substances. I mean, you should be avoiding them anyway, but especially if you're expecting a child because we have lots and lots of research showing the dangers of smoking while pregnant and drugs and alcohol. Okay, so that will conclude our short lecture on prenatal uh, sort of risk factors. Please progress to the next step in the class.